Good morning. Hello. It's uh, 11 a.m. sharp. Uh, so good afternoon to some. Uh, so let us uh, start. Thank you all for joining. And uh, I guess in the coming minutes we will have more people joining. But let's uh, let us start. So welcome to the webinar about uh, di building digital skills among vulnerable groups and. Uh, actually about the uh, grant opportunity that is available currently currently within Transform Together Fund. Uh, the Transform Together Fund is a project jointly um, managed by MFC and uh, uh, and Ceres and uh, Cecile uh, representing um, uh, Ceres is with us uh, at the call. Welcome, good morning, uh, Cecile, to you. Uh, and uh, we, um, yes, uh, this, uh, let me just highlight in the beginning that this grant, uh, we will discuss, um, before we go into details of the webinar, let me just highlight uh, uh, once again that the grant opportunity is available for uh, social finance actors, for financial providers, uh, Bay and associations and NGOs working on financial inclusion that are based in European Union countries or in Norway. This is due to the fact that the source of funding comes from ESF+, Plus, which is um, one of the programs of European Commission. Uh, so today we gathered actually to discuss uh, to um, to discuss two issues. One is to discuss really good um, good practice example ab uh, about uh, building digital skills of microfinance clients. This example is um, um, the good practice belongs to um, KMF KMF Group in Kazakhstan. Uh, our today's speaker will share more about the group and actually what they've been practicing. Uh, so this will be the first part of the webinar. In the second part of the webinar, we are talking specifically about this grant opportunity within Transform Together Fund. Uh, available for financial providers, associations and NGOs from EU, EU countries and Norway. So this will be a second part. Um, throughout the webinar, in the end of the webinar, and but also throughout the webinar, we are going to collect any questions and uh, we will try to answer them as we go. So feel free uh, to either post your question in the chat um or you um uh, or simply unmute yourself at some point and ask your question so uh, let me before um before actually i will introduce our today's speaker let me also say that uh, this webinar is focused on a digital uh, aspect while uh, on Thursday, on Friday, we uh, same time we will host um, within this project. We will host another webinar that will be focused on green. So, if you are more interested in green, um, Aria, feel free to join uh, Friday. Of, or if you know some people who missed today's webinar, they can also they are more than welcome to join on Friday. So, uh, Friday's webinar will be led by the team of uh, series. So uh, today, as I said, we are focusing on digital aspect. Let me introduce um, uh, the speaker. So I'm moderating this event and I'm Eva Bankowska, Deputy Director of MFC. With me uh, is um, uh, Yelizaveta Vyaznikovceva from KMF, uh, the MU, um, the fund of uh, KMF, part of KMF group from Kazakhstan. Uh, Yelizaveta, no. good morning to you. <laughs> um, and uh, Yelizaveta will share with us the overview um, and some key details about how KMF um, builds digital skills of their clients. Um, also, with, with us, there is Kinga uh, Dombrowska, MFC consultant uh, that coordinates the work on uh, Transform Together Fund. She, later on, she will, in the second part of the webinar, she will share the details of the uh, call for proposals and the grant opportunity, and we will welcome all your questions related uh, related to um, uh, 
to the call. Uh, right, thank you, Cecile, for posting in the chat that actually on Friday we will also present the experience of partner from Bosnia in Herzegovina in terms of uh, the um, green project, um, energy efficiency uh, project. So that's a good practice to be presented on Friday. Mm, if you don't mind, would you, we, we don't have really time for introductions uh, so that everybody can introduce yourself, but if you could very briefly write in the chat uh, the organization and country you are from, uh, this will be more than welcome. Um, so feel free to post in the chat uh, the organization you represent as well as the country you, uh, the organization is based in. Uh, while awaiting your chat answers, let me um, let me move on. Um, as I said, we are, um, uh, you know, the Transform Together Fund and the grant opportunities about uh, really um, trying to improve the skills of clients, be it in um, be it in digital area or green area, uh, and um, we are looking to finance certain projects that uh, that innovate in this area. And uh, we invited uh, Elisavieta to share with us the KMF good practice in order to see what kind, simply to have it as an example of the kind of projects we are uh, looking for to, uh, to be funded. So um, Elisavieta, uh, before I give a voice to you, let me just say that KMF, among many, many of the initiatives to build various skills of the clients, they, um, they uh, have um, developed two, um, two initiatives. One of them is the um, educational portal for female entrepreneurs, uh, which they use to help clients, among others, um, to educate them on how to digitalize their business, as well as they have a number of uh, educational activities within the mobile app that was developed for clients in order um, to apply for the loan, to manage the loan, and use various resources available. So, Elisave Elisaveta, now the floor is our virtual floor is yours. So, please um, share with us uh, KMF good practice. And once again, hello to all who are, uh, and thank you for sharing what which uh, what uh, institution you are representing in chat. Elisaveta, the time is okay. yours. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the introduction, Eva. And um, so as you have already mentioned, so my name is Lisa. It's shortly <laughs> and easier. And I'm a project manager at KMF Demio. And first, uh, I would like to uh, speak more about uh, KMF group of companies. And um, uh, as probably you know, KMF is a microfinance institution. It is a leader in the Kazakhstan market among MFIs. And the target audience uh, is micro entrepreneurs in rural areas. And uh, on the slide, you can see uh, the information on uh, loan portfolio, number of sales points and number of clients at KMF. As for KMF Demio, it is a parent company of KMF, which is engaged in the implementation of social projects uh, for the benefit of the society. These are projects on financial literacy, training entrepreneurs in doing their business, supporting socially vulnerable population, children's sports, as well as rural infrastructure. Over the course of activities, we have trained uh, more than 180,000 people in financial literacy, in managing family budget and in business management. More than uh, 3,000 entrepreneurs attended business uh, conferences and forums. More than 100,000 uh, printed materials were issued on financial literacy and business management. Besides... Uh, Actually, next slide, please. Uh, we have female entrepreneurs educational portal, which is called KMF Esker Hanama. It is in Kazakh, but if we translate it, it uh, is KMF Business Lady. And also a mobile application for clients uh, with new model uh, module on business, uh, budget management. As for uh, KMF educational uh, portal, you can see uh, on the slide, 
we have special business catalog where women can describe and demonstrate their businesses. There are articles on business digitalization and quiz on the level uh, of business digitalization. Electronic brochures on how to keep business accounts and Instagram and how to keep financial uh, records, personal budget, sales techniques, and other materials for business. Uh, besides, we conduct trainings for entrepreneurs on business digitalization, both online and offline. In framework of digitalization uh, project, uh, next slide, please, uh, a joint study with EBRD, uh, MFC and MasterCard was made on the level of digitalization maturity of businesses of KMF clients. And more than 100,000 uh, entrepreneurs were surveyed uh, through push notifications and KMF mobile application, call center, and focus groups. The results uh, showed that the level of digital maturity was assessed as average, and in some regions, even closer to high. This user was conventionally called experimenter. Uh, next slide, please. In uh, 2019, KMF developed an in-house mobile application for clients where they can manage uh, the loan through application. So they can apply for a loan and repay their loan, learn some news and have some push notifications. The mobile app is being upgraded all the time. The novelty uh, just uh, this year, just recently, was that we have added to this app the module on budget management, allowing a client to track it, their budget. The very idea of uh, creating budget management service was in 2012, actually, and it, it did not just happen. Uh, we conducted a large-scale study that showed that there is a need for training KMF clients. Uh, and then the main current topics were identified. Budgeting, financial goals, how to take out loans correctly, etc. And in 2013, based on the results of the study, a project was launched to improve the financial literacy of the population. Brochures were created on the most current topics, as well as an accounting notebook or register, a simple tool for keeping records uh, of income and expenses. A brochure with 11 lessons, uh, that was uh, that it was how we called it, was distributed complete with an account book. Yes, thank you. And you can see it on the screen how it looks like. Uh, to both uh, KMF clients and non-clients, during consultations. And the main uh, implementers of the program actually uh, were always credit department employees who directly interact with clients. Considering the latest uh, trends in uh, general digitalization, we began to increasingly think that we need a convenient online tool for budget management integrated into the current KMF application. This is how KMF FinPlan uh, was created. And before launching this module, we also made the research and discovered that, actually the previous slide, please, uh, that 55% uh, of the respondents need recommendations on how to keep budget. And 44% of the respondents would like to know how to avoid thoughtless spending. 82% already use some tools to keep budget. KMF FinPlan works on all mobile platforms as it is a web application and all data stored in the application is encrypted and closed from outside connection. Only the user who contributed them can have access to them and the service itself works in the cloud, so it does not take up much space on the mobile device. Of course, we have plans to implement new functions and some behavioral uh, analytics. So far, the mobile application is not used to analyze data on client income and expenses to issue a loan. Uh, but in the future, uh, we are thinking of uh, maybe using the data uh, to disburse a loan. Actually, uh, <laughs> It is all I wanted to uh, speak about, but if you have questions, mm -hmm. you're welcome. 
Elisa, Elisa, thanks a lot. That was super fast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, what um, what we uh, what I really like in your example is that um, you, you whatever you undertake with clients is based on uh, research of um, the level of the. Uh, skills, level of their knowledge, um, it is, it, it addresses then, um, uh, it addresses then their real needs. And um, I've been kind of following this project of your, uh, those digital tools for clients for quite some time. So I see also the evolution of how uh, the functionalities, the evolution of how it looks. So it means that it's a constant improvement also. Um, let right. me uh, let me open the uh, floor for questions to this practical, um, to this specific good practice of KMF. They, uh, as, um, they have been, I think we saw here two things. One thing is to really uh, effort to support businesses, micro businesses, especially fem of female entrepreneurs, as I understand, mm -hmm. in uh, digitalizing their business. So resources, education, um, uh, um, and education uh, in, in terms of how to digitalize the, the clients, but also the use of digital tools uh, to like this mobile app to help uh, address certain gaps not related to digitalization, but still using digital channels. I think with this um, KMF FIN plan on budget management, you are kind of still improving both the financial education, but also digital skills of clients to use uh, to use various mobile apps. So um, let me check if um, if you have our audience uh, uh, have questions. Okay, there is a first question. Thank you. Uh, what has been the feedback from clients in general, and maybe what was most surprising for you about the feedback? So, so how people react to those solutions, and mm -hmm. what has been surprising for you in how they react? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I should say that, uh, as I have already said, uh, we have just recently implemented this tool, uh, and just uh, two weeks. Uh, and um, of course, it is quite a short period of time to, um, yeah, to have some results. Uh, but still, uh, of course, before launching this product, uh, we. Mm, uh, we visited uh, our clients on their businesses and also the credit specialist and uh, demonstrated uh, this uh, app, this module in the in KMF mobile application um, just uh, for them to understand uh, and um, touch yeah, the, uh, touch it uh, and um, experiment uh, and um, you know, we can see that most our clients, our micro clients, uh, are located in rural areas. And of course, it is quite difficult for them uh, to use these uh, digital tools. And this uh, accounting register, uh, which was shown on one of the slides, was uh, really a very popular tool. Uh, it is a printed, uh, uh, just uh, a brochure uh, with just a um, table, a simple table uh, with um, income and expenses and balance part. That's all. And it was really very popular one. But during uh, the pandemia period, uh, everyone started to understand <laughs> that uh, that they need to go online. Uh, they uh, and that is why actually we have developed a brochure on uh, how to uh, how to keep the accounts, uh, business accounts in Instagram, and this brochure was also very pop popular. Uh, and uh, so that is why they started to, to understand that uh, the mobile application and online tools are really necessary. 
That is why uh, when we developed this mobile application, uh, we also uh, saw that our clients, um, it will be really helpful for our clients. Of course, uh, not each client uh, goes easily to uh, this mobile application application but still uh, they start doing it P probably not as fast as we want to but still uh, and uh, I think that in um, two months or three months uh, we will uh, have some uh, behavioral analytics and uh, of course I will be able to tell you more about the effect the uptake of this uh, pilot test mm -hmm. Uh, excellent. And uh, you mentioned um, you mentioned also that you actually your credit uh, officers they are mm -hmm. quite involved uh, in this yes. work. Can you say uh, just a few words about maybe their reaction or how they are prepared to um, to educate clients? Just what's um, what's their role in this process? Yes, you are quite right. So uh, before launching uh, each product, for example, when KMF uh, launches uh, their credit products, of course, uh, they first train uh, credit specialists. Uh, we did the same. So there was uh, some education first, uh, and we uh, first demonstrated how this module uh, works uh, to the credit specialists. And uh, of course, uh, they they were the first people who gave us their feedback uh, and recommendations, which uh, actually we have implemented uh, before launching it uh, to the market. Uh, so they are really very helpful. And uh, without them, actually, we can't uh, really launch uh, a good product. Right. Okay. That's a good, uh, interesting point that actually the uh, feedback from uh, from staff that works directly with clients yes. and know them well is really a good yeah. uh, source of information about what clients like, what are their needs and so on. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Um, uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, first question, is the application available in other languages? Um, mm -hmm. So I guess other than... Maybe you can share what languages it is actually available. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so uh, now uh, they are available in uh, two languages. It's uh, Russian and Kazakh. So these are um, mainly used languages uh, in Kazakhstan. And uh, But, you know, uh, as uh, we are actually planning uh, to um, also have um, a web view version, uh, a desktop version, uh, it uh, will be able uh, to work um, actually uh, not in KMF mobile application. But now it works only uh, inside this uh, KMF mobile application. Okay, so there there is potential for uh, scale yes. up. And another question is just uh, how much time uh, uh, how much time did it take for you to develop and launch this module? on uh, f um, this one single module on um, on the budget in the mobile app, right? So the app mm -hmm. was uh, already functioning. So how much that did it take you only to develop the module? Mm. Uh, you know, as... Um... Uh, it is uh, um, in. It is working in inside the KMF mobile application. There were some uh, activities done uh, actually to integrate it. Uh, so there were some technical issues. Uh, that is why uh, it took more than uh, we have planned. So actually, we thought that uh, we could be able to uh, launch it uh, just uh, in three months, but it took more. Uh, and uh, it turned out to be five months. Okay, five months. So from three yes. to five, that's uh, yes. uh, still a good result. Um, we uh, we have more questions coming, which is great. So have mm -hmm. you uh, have you had external support, like expert or consulting um, company, in developing uh, this app or the module? Like how how? So it's a question about external resources you use. 
Yes, sure. We have used external support. Actually, uh, we have uh, actually hired vendor company. Uh, and uh, so as for uh, the KMF IT department, of course, they were involved in terms of integration into KMF mobile application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But the, the actual module was developed by a vendor. By a vendor, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> And um, one, uh, one more question. Um, do you consider mobile app a better channel than a classic website or a website mm -hmm. or web portal, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, or have you included this question in testing with clients? So how, have, how did mm -hmm. you choose to develop the app in, uh, instead of preparing the portal, right? Or what's the relation between the two? Mm -hmm. uh, we actually, uh, we didn't include this uh, question, but uh, yes, it's an interesting question. But, uh, you know, uh, the point why uh, we have done this uh, module inside the KMF mobile application, it is uh, because uh, we wanted um, to uh, do something uh, useful for KMF clients. And so, of course, as I have already mentioned, uh, in our plans uh, to do it uh, also outside KMF uh, mobile application uh, for everyone uh, to use it. And then, of course, uh, everyone will be able uh, to, to see it uh, in a web version and to use it uh, not in KMF mobile application. Okay, so okay, clear, uh, clear. Thanks. So, so the rationale is also to uh, to provide this sort of exclusive service for uh, mm -hmm. clients, as I understand that only the clients of KMF can download the the uh, or, or use the app. Okay, clear, mm -hmm. um, clear. Um, let me check if there are more questions in our chat. In our chat, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, there is a question. Um, if the application, how how much is the application user friendly? If everybody mm -hmm. can is able to use it in the mobile, you mentioned that uh, some clients are uh, some clients are really eager to uh, mm -hmm. to up uh, to use the application. Some are late followers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in principle, the question is if the how much how much is the app user friendly? Uh, I guess uh, it is user friendly uh, because actually we have used uh, so the um, interface logics and all the um, colors KMF uses in uh, the uh, mobile application and um, so of course if uh, a client does not have a smartphone of course he won't be able to uh, use the mobile application so this is uh, only for those who have smartphones but it is uh, really um, easy to use mm -hmm. okay okay thanks a lot uh, Lisa I think we are also, there are no new questions. So um, so thanks a lot. Thank you all for your questions. I guess that was really interesting yeah, to hear, you. to dig uh, a bit more. And thank you, Elisaveta, for presenting uh, KMF, um, um, KMF experience. What, just one last question. Yeah, What's sure. on your agenda? Like, what are your plans about new initiatives? Do Can you... Um, uh, can you share with us or it's still kind of uh, mm, still in, too internal? Uh, of course, uh, every every week, every month, uh, the KMF mobile application is being upgraded. And as for KMF in plan, uh, we are going to mm, implement some functions, new functions, but we should analyze uh, the user behavior first. Uh, that is why it will take some time 
and afterwards of course uh, we will uh, implement uh, some some new things but as for kmf for example uh, they have uh, now piloted um, a new um, tool and which is called kmf bazaar actually it is like kmf market uh, but it's for the farmers actually it is uh, also a novelty in Kazakhstan uh, because uh, we didn't have uh, anything like uh, a marketplace for for the farmers so now it's being piloted and uh, so let's see okay <laughs> interesting works uh, interesting so we are looking forward to the results to hear about yes. the results Elisabetta, thank you so much for your presentation you. and for sharing your experience. Uh, we are looking forward to those novelties and um, let us uh, then move on. Thank uh, you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, let us move on to the actually the second part of the of the webinar during which we will talk about uh, Transform Together Fund and the grant opportunity for financing similar projects to what we heard or any totally other ideas. Um, as I said, this project is, um, as I said in the beginning, this project is managed by MFC in partnership with Ceres and SPTF. Um, uh, and uh, uh, the grant opportunity is available for uh, social finance actors. We will define uh, this in a few seconds, uh, but um, the grant opportunity is available for social finance actors that are based in countries of European Union and Norway. So uh, this limitation is due to the fact that the origin, uh, the source of funding uh, comes from ESF plus a program of European Union, and that's a limitation uh, of European Commission. So um, highlighting this, let me give floor uh, to my colleague uh, Kinga. Um, uh, Kinga Dombrowska, who uh, is um, helping, uh, who is uh, helping us to um, to prepare and launch and launch and uh, run the call for proposals. So, uh, Kinga, um, let me let me simply give floor to you to um, uh, to share about. Oh, I'm so, I'm really sorry for. Uh, for changing the slides. Uh, if um, I will also manage the chat with your questions, so feel free to ask your questions as uh, Kinga uh, presents uh, the fund. So Kinga, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Eva. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's good to see some also familiar uh, names uh, uh, because I used to work for MFC. Eva, I think we lost the yeah, presentation. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, apologies. Uh, I'm um, right. So uh, I will uh, give you a brief uh, presentation about the, the fund. Uh, as Eva mentioned, uh, it's, it's called Transform Together Fund. Uh, the uh, objective, the general objective of the fund is to provide opportunity um, and to find uh, examples uh, of projects uh, which will focus on uh, developing and testing specific digital or green solutions uh, among vulnerable uh, micro entrepreneurs groups. Uh, so this is the general objective of the call. So all the projects which are within that objective uh, are more than welcome. In terms of applicants, uh, it can be all social finance actors from EU countries or Norway. And uh, the key target groups, so beneficiaries of those projects should be micro entrepreneurs groups, specifically low income, women, migrants, uh, or uh, refugees. Uh, so these are the main uh, beneficiaries. Of course, if you include also others, that's fine, but uh, the, the focus should be on those groups. Um, the Social finance actors, we define as a, a few different types of institutions. So first of all, all microfinance institutions, um, no matter if they are non-banking financial institutions or banks, 
as long as they provide microfinance, social finance providers, also national microfinance or social finance associations, um, non-government organizations uh, working with those specific uh, target groups on uh, social uh, inclusion, also regional networks working on financial inclusion. Uh, so these are different types of actors which can apply uh, for the fund. There are two other conditions. First, you, you have to be a legal entity. Uh, so you have to be registered in one of uh, EU countries or Norway. If you meet those criteria, uh, you, can, you can apply. Uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the main objective is to support new innovative ideas focused on green and digital. Uh, today we had a presentation on digital. On Friday there will be presentation also on some examples uh, on, on green. So these are the main themes uh, which the project has to cover. Uh, and by innovation, what we mean by innovation, because there are different definitions. So it has to be something new in the market. Uh, so for example, it may be something which already exists in another country, but nobody does it in your country and you will be the first one. So this is something new in the market. It can be new for a specific uh, group. So there may be something which already exists in your country or you are even doing it, but you've never done it to this specific target group, for example, micro-entrepreneur women. Uh, or it may be new for the institution. So it may be that others are already doing some something similar, but it will be new for you and you will specifically focus on those target groups. So this is what we mean by innovation. So it's also a broad definition um, of, of innovation and uh, you need to basically provide explanation how, you, uh, how your project is innovative uh, uh, in, in the in the application. Uh, so, any questions by now? Uh, uh, we... we repeat once again, it's only EU countries, so European Union countries, plus Norway. Overseas territories of EU countries are also eligible. Uh, I saw questions about Turkey or Albania. At this moment, none of those countries can apply for the fund. Uh, so, so this is about the, the countries. Uh, what we expect uh, when we apply. So um, we, we expect that, for example, uh, uh, the beneficiaries, so the groups which I mentioned before, micro-entrepreneurs, low-income uh, women, migrants, refugees, uh, improve uh, uh, skills or they will gain new knowledge related to green or digital. Uh, the beneficiaries attitude towards green solutions or digital solutions will change uh, when they are conducting or running their businesses. Um, uh, because also there was quite a lot of study done in Europe that a lot of uh, those target groups, they their attitude towards new things introducing new green or digital solutions is uh, a little bit, they are hesitating for different reasons. So if the project focus on, on that and uh, by the end of the project, at least it is tested and uh, uh, it shows some pretty good testing results that uh, the solution you propose will help uh, to introduce green solution or digital solution among the beneficiaries, that's also um, uh, interesting for us. So any solutions uh, that enable beneficiaries to apply green or digital practices in their businesses. Uh, and uh, also if they start implementing the new uh, solutions, green or digital. So that's, uh, that's the, the results, examples of results we expect. All that information is also provided in the, in the guidelines. Uh, I think, uh, I believe Eva shared the link. Mm, so whatever I say, you can read uh, also more in details in the uh, in the guidelines uh, we prepared. What kind of activities uh, can be funded? 
so capacity building activities, uh, you name it, trainings, webinars, one-to-one, um, developing and testing social innovations, uh, solutions related to green or digital, uh, where beneficiaries will benefit. Uh, research activities that leads to developing and testing a solution. So research in itself cannot be a project. Research can be part of the project um, and then it, the cost can be funded. Um, uh, projects uh, and activities focusing on creating ecosystem that helps beneficiaries apply green or digital practices. Um, Activities which relates to uh, product develop development focus, of course, on innovative green or digital uh, solutions. Uh, promoting green, any activities which promotes green or digital um, micro entrepreneurship um, and uh, practices of micro entrepreneurs uh, focused on green or on the or digital. So these are like examples of activities. This is not full list because we, we it's impossible uh, but to just give you an examples of activities which um which can be uh, fa funded under this uh, program they are pretty broad so you can also uh, i guess find uh, uh, activities which you may uh, uh, plan mm -hmm. Pretty much uh, uh, just about those activities, pretty much that's exactly what uh, the, we saw in KMF, uh, KMF example. Um, I'm, um, we might, we should be realistic about the grant amount, of course, and probably it won't be enough to cover all the costs related to, uh, for example, app development, but definitely certain activities uh, that we lead to a solution uh, can be financed. Okay, so the grant amount can be from uh, 20 to 50,000 euros. Uh, and the, the cost of co-financing is 90%. So you need to have your own financing 10% uh, of the um, of the of the of the costs to be financed by you. Uh, in-kind volunteering activities is not part of the co-financing. Um, so, so just so you know. Um, and I see a question. Uh, can you yeah, yes. establish MFI Actually, can apply? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they can apply, but they need to also answer some other questions and to show uh, that uh, they will be able to implement the project. So also one of the areas which is evaluated is the uh, capacities of the team who is going to implement the project. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, we didn't put any um, limits on uh, how old the institution has to be um, uh, because we want to give floor also to uh, institutions which are maybe not so so much so long on the market, but uh, which may have some interesting ideas, new ideas, uh, new approaches to, to those uh, themes. Uh, so we are not excluding. Um, they have to be registered. So if you are not registered institution, you cannot apply. There is also a question, Kinga, uh, can we include marketing promotional activities in the funded project, the cost to launch, promote product after it is done? So, um... The, the answer is yes, that mm -hmm. uh, marketing activities, uh, promotional activities related to the uh, that relate to uh, uh, uptake of the developed solution by clients definitely can be uh, can be covered uh, mm -hmm. from the project budget. Yes. So, for example, if you develop and test uh, a new app which will help clients, let's say, to do accounting, you can include promotion of that product uh, and the cost of the promotion in the project. Mm. However, uh, you know, if you have already a product uh, and you just want to do a promotion of that product, no, that will not be, uh, uh, because if the product already exists and you already have this product, um, that would not be uh, innovation. Uh, 
a little innovation, <laughs> first of all. But but however, addition uh, of something that is new, a new feature of the of the service, a new feature of the product, something that is really new that uh, but added to existing existing uh, solution. That's definitely innovation. <laughs> yes, that's why you have to be very careful when you explain uh, things in the proposal. Uh, so please um, try to, you know, really to stress how it is innovative. Uh, so it will be easy uh, and clear for the uh, for the uh, evaluators uh, to look at your project. Um, yeah. There is a, a question about how many projects will be awarded uh, per EU country, or is it purely mm -hmm. based on the quality of the proposal? So this is purely based on the quality of proposal proposals. Uh, we would like uh, to have at least 30% uh, of the projects from one of the themes or the other, so at least 30 to 70%. But we are not specifying that we would like to have more green or digital products nor uh, we are putting any limits uh, how many projects we will we we will fund from specific country if we will find five very interesting and the best projects uh, proposed in one country uh, if they will go through evaluation and they will be highly evaluated they will be funded so we don't have any any uh, limits on on that and uh, there is one more uh, question about the mandatory expenses, yeah. and it comes right with this slide. Very, very the, good. The, very the good. answer comes right yes. with this slide. So uh, because this is a program for us, uh, which is uh, run by MFC and Series plus SPTF, uh, we also consider this program as a capacity building program for uh, the grantees we will select. So among... Uh, mandatory activities which you which the cost you have to include are some uh, uh, some activities first of all there will be mandatory meetings free mandatory meetings uh, for all grantees and the objective of those meetings is uh, to to learn and later to share experience among uh, among grantees uh, so there will be a kickoff meeting in Paris in February. The dates are already set, uh, 14, 16 February 2024. Then uh, there will be midterm progress uh, review meeting in Warsaw uh, sometime in September 24. Uh, this will be also pure learning exchange of experience meeting, uh, lessons learned uh, from the first phase of the projects. And then there will be final meeting in Brussels uh, sometime in April uh, 25. Uh, also, uh, we will uh, have monthly online pillar learning meetings uh, with other grantees. Uh, so you can learn from each other experience. You can ask questions. Uh, so that way, in practical way, uh, we, can, we can exchange experience and learn uh, from from others, um, which can be beneficial uh, for for all of us, and then there will be also opportunities for online uh, coaching sessions. Uh, we more or less put it like five online coaching sessions per per grantee, and during the project. Um, also, uh, each grantee will be obliged to organize local dissemination event when they will present the results of their projects and lessons learned. Um, how the local event should be designed, it's up to the grantee. We can help a little bit advise how it can look like, but it's up to the grantee to, um, to define that, uh, that meeting. So there are some compulsory costs which has to be included in the budget, uh, like travel, accommodation, and also some time for uh, peer learning uh, meetings or online meetings. We also expect that the, the coordinator of the project uh, speaks English uh, because the working language of the of the program is English. Applications also has to be uh, submitted in English. Um, therefore, the, the key staff involved in the project 
um, from the institutions, from the grantees, needs to speak uh, speak English. So to sum up, uh, the costs uh, of uh, those travels mentioned um, can uh, should be actually part of the uh, requested budget so that the grant amount should uh, cover those travels and accommodation, as well as the costs of local dissemination event, uh, which... Um, which um, is uh, simply an event to share the lessons learned from the project with the local um, social social economic community, right? So it can be a standalone event. It can be part of the conference, local conference, or any other type of um, dissemination event. Okay, so, so these are mandatory activities. Um, so now the the key uh, key dates uh, for you to remember. Deadline to submit applications is thirteenth November at uh, uh, five p.m. Central European time. Uh, we expect to have results uh, from the evaluation between December twenty and the end of January uh, twenty four. And also, when you start when you prepare the the proposal. Um, we expect that starting date of the project will be the February 1st, 24. Um, so don't put the plan with the project starting earlier because definitely it will not start earlier. Um, so these are uh, these are the dates. Uh, and uh, how to submit application. Um, Eva put it in the chat, the link to the website. Uh, where you can download application form and the budget template. Um, and there are also guidelines with all the information and more detailed information that I've just shared. Um, you are requested to send application form in PDF format, as well as budget in PDF and Excel format. Also, we ask for a few additional documents. So please submit them also as annexes in PDF format. Uh, and you need to send it everything via one email to ttfgrants at mfc.org.pl and deadline is 13th November. Uh, we also assume that you may have some questions while you prepare the, uh, uh, your applications. So welcome to send your questions to uh, TTF Grants and we will be happy to, to answer. Uh, however, please note that if you send questions after 30th November, October, uh, we may not be able to answer them all because if there will be very complicated uh, questions, we may not find enough time to, to prepare the answer. So, um, so please uh, send, think about the projects and send your questions before. Um, we will be uh, answering uh, as, as we receive them. Uh, so, uh, so feel free to contact us uh, via via email. There was uh, there has there is also a question mm -hmm. about uh, MFC uh, and uh, Ceres support uh, during the application process. So we are really happy to support uh, the process and by answering any uh, questions, any concerns. Um, as, uh, as Kinga said, please send us a message and we will try to uh, to answer it as soon as possible. If these are simple questions, we will answer quite uh, shortly. If they are more complicated, um, then of course we need time. Uh, however, we will do our uh, do our best to answer anything your concerns related to how to fill the forms, um, how to understand different definitions or questions or requests from um, from uh, application documents. So, so definitely um, we are happy to help here. However, we will not be assessing the quality of your applications during the- At this stage. Yeah. At this stage. So if you send us a question, do you think this is a good idea? Sorry, we will not answer. We will send, send you the answer. Sorry, we cannot answer this question. If you ask about eligibility, of course, we will answer. But uh, don't, uh, don't expect to assess 
the idea, ideas uh, during uh, at this stage. Uh, let me also uh, mention that uh, the evaluation uh, will be conducted at two stages. At the first stage, it will be just administration check to make sure that we received all the information documents filled in. And then uh, the, the, the evaluation will be conducted by external experts hired by uh, MFC and Ceres uh, to conduct uh, the evaluation. And based on their uh, evaluation, we will, uh, meaning MFC and Ceres, uh, will uh, choose the best uh, applications for, to, to, be, to be granted. Okay, um, let us, uh, so I've been trying to answer all the questions during the chat. We also answered them here um, um, by speaking. So if you have any remaining questions, let us know. Feel free to unmute yourself. I see Cecile uh, from Ceres, representing Ceres, our partner. You uh, are, Cecile, would you like to add something or invite to the Friday's uh, webinar? Yeah, no, thank you. I think uh, we can continue the discussion on Friday with a partner in Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, sharing experience on green and also a little bit of digital. Uh, and I think there are lots of questions for people who are not on the eligible countries, but um, our answer would be, we will share the lessons. That's the objective also. Uh, with MFC and Service Plus SPTF, we, we like sharing lessons and providing resources to guide uh, the next steps for any participants from any part of the world. So the project itself is focused on uh, EU countries, but the results of the project will be shared uh, widely. Uh, right. In terms of, uh, there is just one comment regarding the link for Friday's webinar. Let me just say that uh, actually there is no registration to that event on Friday. So you just need to book your time and click the link uh, when it's time to join the webinar. So, um, uh, yeah, sorry, it's slightly different. So the link is on the TTF uh, web page. Uh, so on the when you when it is called register, you can just click on the link uh, at eleven a.m. Uh, Central Easter time on Friday. So slightly different way we will harmonize also our way of sharing the links. Right, so I posted, uh, once again, I posted the link both to the call for proposal and all the application documents, as well as the link to the Friday's webinar uh, focus on um, the topic of green, but co covering digital as well. So we invite you to also check out the good practice of partner who will be a guest speaker there. Um, okay, meantime, let me uh, do the th two things. First of all, um, let me uh, ask you to fill in a very brief evaluation poll as we are always interested to know your feedback but also i'm looking forward to hear some final um final questions if um so feel free to either unmute yourself or um ask them through chat and please uh, uh fill in um the uh, evaluation form uh, we we are we would really appreciate your answer mm. as i see there are no more uh, no more questions in the chat so uh, let me actually stop here our webinar maybe, mm -hmm. Eva, maybe just a tiny comment mm -hmm. that we discussed internally also we say uh, the innovation in digital or green but we also appreciate uh, digital innovation taking into account green uh, questions or right a uh, green uh, building on digital. So it's not necessary to very separate aspects. 
yeah, green should be everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, very, yes, thank you. Th thanks, Cecile, for this comment. Indeed, it's important that uh, we are, we, for the, we are kind of, we are not really separating digital and green because the applications can cover both aspects in the way uh, exactly. Uh, it's just for the purpose of slightly showing also the diversity, but definitely uh, green should be everywhere. <laughs> also in digital. Okay, so uh, with this, thank you so much for participation. Thank you for questions. Uh, once again, a big thank you to Lisa, you uh, from, uh, and KMF team behind uh, this experience. So uh, pass on our greetings to the whole team. Thank you all for participation, for questions. And uh, we are looking forward uh, to hear from you and uh, we are looking forward to your applications.